Hello and welcome in this two-part tutorial that will cover the creation of a plasma ball. In this first part, we'll see how to use the projection script instead of the projection evolver. Basic knowledge of popcorn effects will prove useful to follow this tutorial more easily. First, import the provided file in a new project, then open it. In this effect, we have a first shape that will be used for the emitting ball. Another bigger shape that will correspond to the system's glass wall. A turbulence has already been set up for the sake of this tutorial, as well as a layer that will serve as a base of the effect. Beneath is another layer, but this one won't be of any use and is just used here as a visual placeholder. So let's start. Select the spawner script of the first layer, and then we set the position at a random around the sphere. Those random positions will then be used for the projection. So we use the position equals v random. As you can see, the points are placed at a random at one meter distance from the center. A rule that applies to all projections, the closer to the surface the point is, the cheaper the projection is to process. Since we are going to project these points on both the previously mentioned shapes, we'll reposition the points between them. Use the position equals vrandom multiplied by 0.5. We'll now create a new layer in the layer groups that we'll use for the effects branches. Set the durations in seconds to zero and raise the spawn count to 20. We'll now plug this layer in as an event of the first layer. In events, click create and name the new event on death to automatically trigger at the particle's death. Select the future branches layer. The new layer triggers at the first layer's position. We'll now transfer the positions of the triggering layer in the new layer's evolve script by overriding its positions. To achieve that, create a new field of type float3 named plus parent and type in position in the virtual parents field. This allows us to retrieve the parents position field at trigger time. So let's replace the useless velocity line with this one. Pause parent equals parent dot position. Now we're going to add a new script evolver and set position to pause parent. Change the size value in the spawner script for better visibility. So we'll set the size to 0 0.005. Now we're going to create our two projections that we'll use to model the branches of the effect. So let's create a first temporary float 3 field in the script and set it to pause parent, plus its value projected on the source shape. So we'll use float 3 pause 1 project equals pause parent plus source.projectPostParent.xyz We'll swizzle the result of the projection to only keep the projection vector, the W component corresponding to the projection distance. Copy-paste this line of script and replace the temporary field and the shape used for the projection. Float3, position2, project, project, equals parent plus glass.project, position parent.xyz we're going to use the lerp function to transition between these two values in position and apply it to the particles. In order to do that, we'll use spawner.life ratio, which holds the layer's elapsed emission time, normalized between 0 and 1. In a layer such as this one with an emission time set to 0, each particle still gets a valid value between 0 and 1. So we're going to add a new field named SLR.
and in the spawner script set it to spawner dot life ratio. So it becomes SLR equals spawner dot life ratio. Now we're gonna insert a new pause field above the position line. And we're gonna alert between the position one project and position two project depending on the SLR. And now let's replace pause parent with pause in the positions line. We'll now replace the billboard renderer with a ribbon renderer so that all the particles are linked together on each branch. And let's add the texture available in the package. And now we're going to create a new temporary float 3 field in the script evolver that we'll use to modulate the branch's colors. So we'll use a float 3C to lerp between two values depending on the SLR. We'll yet again use the lerp function with the SLR to create a color transition. Assign this value to colors RGB, which is the float 4 XYZ component. So color equals float 4, the color that we already lerped, and 1 so that they will be opaque. Now what you have to do is add a new curve which allows us to drive the color transition more easily and name it curve color. And then we substitute SLR with a sample of this curve at SLR and the color lerp. So let's give the curve this kind of shape. and create a new curve that will modulate the luminous intensity. Let's name this one curve power. Multiply the RGB color by this curve. So the color now equals the color multiplied by the curve that we just made, depending on the SLR. And shape it in this way. Let's now add some turbulence to our ribbons. Sample the turbulence with buzz and add it to position. The turbulence is applied globally to the ribbon. In order for us to smoothly apply the turbulence in the middle we'll use this simple math formula, which is sine the SLR by pi. And now we'll have an arc effect in the middle that we'll have to amplify. So to do that, on the first layer, declare a new field named direction random and initialize it with the vrand function in the spawner script. After that, we'll have to add this field in the virtual parent field of the triggered effect, as well as in its fields. And to retrieve this value in the spawner script, we use direction random equals parent di direction random. After that, insert a new line in the evolve script right above buzz, arc equals direction random. In order for us to apply the arc globally on the branches, we're going to use the following formula, which is position equals arc plus pause plus turbulence one dot sample pause. And then let's use the sine SLR by pi formula again, but this time on direction random to apply the arc at the center of the ribbons. And finally, multiply all that by life ratio so that the motion evolves with the branch's age. And then we need to divide it by 4 to lower the amplitude. We'll now add a little movement on the branch's length. At the beginning of the Evolva script, add two new temporary fields, pause 1 and pause 2. 
Pause 1 will add vertical movement to pause parent by using the life ratio. So we're going to use the float 3 pause 1 equals pause parent plus float 3 0 life ratio multiplied by 0 0.1 0. And pause 2 will add some random turbulences. So we use float 3 pause 2 equals pause parent plus turb 1 sample pause parent. And now it's just a matter of replacing pause parent with pause 1 and pause 2 in the pause 1 project and pause 2 project to apply the movement to the system. So we use the formula pause 1 project equals pause 1 plus source pro dot project pause 1 dot xyz. Flow 3 pause 2 equals pause 2 plus glass dot project pause 2 dot xyz. Finally, change the value of life to 0 0.3 and raise the spawn count to 100 in the first layer. And voila, this is our first part done. Thanks for watching this tutorial and see you soon for part two.